I was born in Troy, New York, to about 150 miles north of here. I currently live in Kingston, where I have artist housing with my wife, who's a painter. Um, I stayed in Troy till I was 20, and I began studying at about 17 years of age with Dave Cobb, who's the father of Tim Cobb, info based on New York Bill. And uh, David was and is a legend. And about uh, two years after I began studying, he said, well, it's time for you to go up and study with Henry Portnoy at New England Observatory. Now, I didn't grow up with classical music, but I could always kind of wiggle my fingers appropriately. So I went up and I auditioned for Henry and he kind of begrudgingly accepted me, but he scared the life out of me. <laughs> So uh, that summer I had a scholarship at Chautauqua Institute and I met Jim Harnett, who is principal bass in Seattle Symphony. And I really loved him. So I moved out to Seattle when I was 20 and I stayed there till I was 50. I thought I was just gonna go to school there, but in fact, I got married and uh, had a wonderful son. Um, and I stayed. And then the really good thing about Seattle is it wasn't what it is now. I moved there in the, in the mid seventies. Um, so it was, my impression was it was always like a city about to happen, but it allowed me to develop at my own pace, my own style, which I think this might lead into the last question, but I feel that's very important is that you have to be able to develop outside of fads in music and Seattle allowed me to do that. Starting in the 90s, I was coming back more and more to New York to work. Uh, and then in about 2005, I think I moved back to New York. <laughs> the first time I ever walked in this shop, the first time I met Barry, right in front of the store was his carcassi, which he had made for himself. And it's just, the shape of the instrument is, is so beautiful. And his work is so amazing. I just, I'm one of those guys, I get really excited about instruments. And I just, it, I, I said, oh man, what is this for sale? And the person I was with who knew Barry better. I mean, I had just met him. I said, that, that's his face. That's his face. Oh, I said, oh, okay. So always in my mind was, I need this bass. But the bass I played for 40 something years, maybe 45, 46 years, was an 18th century Italian instrument, which everyone coveted. And I loved it for many years. Um, about three years ago, I had open heart surgery. And when I came out of that, for some reason, I didn't hear that bass anymore. I just, I didn't hear it. Uh, fortunately, in the interim, I found a German bass that I liked and I played that a lot. And then, but I just, I couldn't, I'd call up Barry and say, look, I don't hear this instrument. He'd say, oh, you're nuts. So, okay, so it went on for a while longer. And finally he said, okay, come on in. I came in and I tried a bunch of basses and I kind of settled on a hawks. But then, right, I remembered the Karkazi, and I said, do you have any Karkazis? And he says, no, nope, but I'm about to uh, make one, and I'll give you right a first refusal. I said, great, I'll never have anything to do for sure. Uh, so that's how I got it, and um, I'm very honored. If this particular instrument, if you could see the label, he dedicated to his father, Samuel Goldstein. Uh, so that's a very great uh, honor for me. But that's how I got it, and I basically had to um, pass the Catalan bass on, which huge emotional deal for me. But I say I have never regretted it once. This is such a spectacular instrument.
case is about 14 months old now and it sounds like an 18th century Italian base already and it still has many years of growth. I mean the bottom growls, the top sings and the middle, you know, almost every base has a good middle but this middle is, is spectacular. Just in every range, it's even, it's beautiful. Um, and just today, I got the C extension put on and that's just opened up the bass even more. I mean, I still have to learn how to, how to play it, but wow, I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing instrument and it's uh, reinvigorated me, I guess, you know, uh, after all the years I put into the bass, it's, um, Getting better is um, much more gradual than it used to be. You know, when you first start, there's a high learning curve. And then after tw 20 years, that's a high learning curve. And then after 47 years, <laughs> even smaller. But this has helped, helped me grow immensely. I just came back from a solo tour of the Southeast, uh, which I uh, won a grant for with this instrument um, from South Arts. Before, right before that, I was in Italy during um, a solo tour. Not with this bass, it's very hard to travel with the bass. You can, most people have to play bass du jour. Um, and because people respond to my playing, uh, I have a feature article in Jazz Is for the summer issue, which is also uh, the, uh, the issue dedicated to Charles Mingus's 100th birthday. All my life, I, you know, I've been known as a physical player. I, you know, I play improvised music and most people who do that use an amplifier. I don't. I mean, I do occasionally, but mostly I don't. So I really have to make sound at the instrument so people are used to me making a big sound. Uh, but they're just, they're blown away. And they're just, wow. Um, you know, I've had, I've probably made three or four records with this bass now that aren't, none of them are out yet, but I mean, the engineers, everybody just can't believe the sound. And, you know, in a way they're used to me making a big sound, but it's just, it's so huge and wonderful. Um, Carl Berger, who uh, is one of the, he's been making records since the 60s. I play with Carl in a few ensembles and one, he's the conductor, he's the leader. It's like in improvised music, it's called a conduction. It's a little bit different than a conductor. But he told me after the last concert, he said, you know, people are gonna go away from this remembering you. He said, that sound is just, it's just, you know, it's there always. A really important thing for me, I kind of came into being in the 80s and there were the kind of neo wars at that time where you had to choose between being a jazz musician or a creative musician. And all my mentors before that had always told me there was no difference. You know, there was just no, no difference. So I, I would think what I would hope people can grasp at this point, because now we're kind of in the evolution of the revolution, is that the tradition of this music is to move it forward. Yes, you have to, um, you have to love the history, you have to know it, but you have to move it forward. And it's important how you move it forward. It's not, you know, Albert Eiler said, it's not about notes anymore, it's, it's about the sound. 
But what is that sound? I think that's the question that always gets me. And sometimes I think one of my guiding principles is actually comes from literature. Uh, Jack Kerouac, who is the most famous beat writer, he had an article about creative writing and he talked about not starting from the subject itself, but starting from the jewel center of that subject. So you have to interpret what that is. And he says, spin outward from there. And that's what I always try to do. But however anybody wants to go about it, it has to be a sincere effort. That's all I can say.